Hey, so a couple of days ago, I was looking into some cost optimizations I could do with EC2. Uh, and kind of the use case was we have a development server that throughout the day needs to be running. Uh, but at night, you know, to save some money, we could actually just stop it. Uh, so in this video, I want to run through how I got around doing that We're using Lambda and CloudWatch events. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we want to create a new policy. And we're going to create a new policy. And we'll create the policy and we'll go to policy generator. So we want to be able to access EC2. So the reason why I'm doing a policy other than just giving full access or using one of the given ones already is that I really only want this Lambda or this pot, you know, this role uh, to just be able to do stop and start instances. So in here, I can actually pick out saving me having to do any JSON or anything kind of stuff. Here we can start and stop instances. And I'm going to do it for everything. So because I'm going to make quite a generic Lambda uh, function that will allow me to kind of specify the instance ID, the region, and just, you know, I can take advantage of CloudWatch to actually just run that. So I'm going to add the statements. Next step. Let's name this policy. So let's call this start stop EC2 instances and just create the policy. OK, so with that created now, let's make a new role. So create a new role and I'm going to say that Lambda's have a role with start stop and again I'm going to say start stop EC2 instances and create that role. So now we have a lambda role that can start and stop EC2 instances, any EC2 instances essentially. Uh, so let's go to EC2 quickly and one thing we're going to need when we play around with this function is you can see here I've got a little T2 micro instance running um, called it development and I'm going to just take a, a take a note of the instance ID so now we're going to go off to lambda and we're going to create our function we're going to start off as we know the EC2 instance is already running we're going to start off with the stop EC2 instance and we're going to use our new role so now what we can do is we can actually implement it. We're going to use node 610. Uh, first thing we need to do is include the AWS SDK. And then I'm just going to paste in the actual code. And then you can say here, so we've got the event. Uh, we're going to be able to pass in the instance region and the instance ID. And if it all goes well with the stopping of the instances, it's just going to send back successfully stop with the instance ID. Else it's going to catch it and it's going to just do the callback with the error. So in here now, let's do some configuring of that. You can see already from a previous test of this, I actually did, we can actually, I've saved the test event. So you can see here, this is what it would look like when you pass it in instance region and then the instance ID. So I'm just make sure that is the instance. It is the instance that I'm currently running. So paste that in and we're okay. So if I go save and test, and we can see that successfully done. So if I go to EC2, and just see running instances is none. And you can see now it's actually stopping that, which is great. So with that in place, let's go back to Lambda and let's go back and let's create another function. And you can probably see we're gonna go off here. We're gonna do it the start EC2 instance. And we're gonna create that there, with that role. And in a similar way, we're just gonna copy in all the bits. And you can see here that instead of stopping it, we're starting it and it just follows a very similar pattern. Uh, you can see again that it's already got the test event. So this is all the same stuff as before. We're going to do save and test. And we're going to see this work. OK, so it's successfully done. And in here we can see pending. So you can see now that with Lambda, we're able to interface with EC2 with that role. And it's only got access to start stop instances, which is nice. It can't do anything else. And we can specify within the event, the region and the actual instance ID that we want. So that's all great, but we still have to do this manually. So let's, let's automate this process by going to CloudWatch. Okay. And we're going to go to rules and we're going to create a rule and we're going to make it on a schedule and we're going to take advantage of their cron expressions. So in this contrived example, I'm going to say that at 6.30 in the morning, I want you to kick off the server. And you can see it's quite nice. It provides you with an example of what will be what that cron expression will actually pass down to. So we're going to say start it up 
and configure input and we can just actually have a constant um, JSON input and this is just yeah the region and similar from the test data so it's the region and the instance ID that we want configure that so we can say start development server and create that rule there we go and all we need to do as well in the schedule I'm going to say it's 6 30 in the evening Again, you can see the examples of how it, what it will actually do. We're going to stop the instance, and I'm just going to pass in the constant again. Configure that, and then say here, stop development server. Create the rule, and there you go. And that's pretty much it. So this will now in the mornings at 6.30 uh, kick off and start the development server, and in the evening, stop the development server. So saving you some, you know, some money throughout the evening at night when people aren't going to be using it. So I hope that helped out, like kind of work out how you could use Lambda, EC2 and CloudWatch events to kind of make a good solution to a problem like this.